Well, hello everyone. This is Kelly here from Kelly Chassis Fine Art for another episode here on Creating with Kelly. And what we're going to do on this one is I'm going to show you how I recycled these old doors that I have here that were from my bathroom that were all water damaged. And I'm going to be doing a coat of resin on here to uh, give it a, a new look. So stick around and check it out. So hey everyone, welcome. Um, what I'm starting out with here is some just some Elmer's glue and I wanted to make sure that I sealed those edges so the resin doesn't uh, pour out of the cabinet. And I'm using Art Resin. I'll make sure to post a link down here for you guys on all these materials that I'm using. Um, I'm mixing up quite a bit here and um, I did end up mixing up some more to do both doors, but I'm just gonna show you the one door to start with. So once that resin was stirred up for three minutes, I separated it into separate cups with the colors that I'm choosing here. Now I'm using golden fluid for the white because it's very opaque and I really wanted to give a good coat of white over these doors because as you can see, they have a lot of uh, water damage on here. And um, so I wanna make sure that we covered that up. Then the resin will protect the doors now from uh, any type of moisture from the bathroom, but I did not coat the entire thing. So I'm gonna do a touch up here afterward with the white as well. Um, the white seemed to be fine. It was just the panels in here that uh, were in tough shape. So, so I, I mixed up um, the white here, just giving it a good stir, making sure that I've got that mixed in there really well. And we're just gonna start with doing a pour of the white on the bottom and I like to do um, either clear resin or colored resin when I'm doing this first just to make sure I have a good solid coat down here and it helps um, when I'm working with the resin to be able to make it flow a little bit better once you have a, a base layer down. So I'm trying to scoop up as much as I can here. And then I'm gonna take the torch to this afterward. And uh, once you heat the resin up, it tends to move a lot better. So um, it's it's pretty thick at this point. And you can see it, it does it is self-leveling, but it does take a little bit more. You do wanna make sure if you do this projects that you have uh, your area nice and level. And you can see here where I've also taken some blue painter's tape and taped up all of the edges of the door because I am a hot mess when I get going here on these uh, projects. So I wanted to make sure I didn't get any resin on the top. So those are all taped up as, as well as the handles on there. And you can see the glue has nicely dried here. So I, I did the glue ahead of time and made sure that that had a good uh, half a day to dry with that glue in there. So, uh, and I also did a second coat of the glue just to be sure and it worked out well. I had no leakage under, uh, under the uh, bottom of the cabinets. So I have my little torch here and I'll also put a link down there for you on the little torch, the little blow torch propane, which is very easy to refill. I love this little thing. You usually get these at the hardware stores. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure I get most of the bubbles out there, heat the resin up so that we can get a good solid base on here now. All right, so now that that resin has been heated up just a little bit, you have to be careful that you don't burn it. So you don't wanna leave it in one spot for too long when you're using that torch. Um, but now I'm just kind of rocking the panel back and forth, trying to get this to uh, cover the entire area. And you can see where it's flowing pretty good now that it's uh, warmed up. And I'm gonna just take my popsicle stick here and just kind of spread it along making sure that that's moving. Now, um, Art Resin actually has a, uh, a nice little um, tool that it's a plastic tool that you can get and I'll post a link for that. I have had one before, used it, and I left it in the resin accidentally and I ruined it, so I have to order another one. <laughs> um, so I'm using my popsicle stick at this point. It works just as well. You could also use an old brush to kind of move this around if you wanted to as well but credit cards, whatever works for you. 
and we're going to be putting uh, probably about a quarter inch um, depth in total for the resin. So this is you know quite a good good size space. Um, Art Resin also has on their website a uh, nice link to give you kind of an idea of how much resin that you'll need to mix up depending on the area that you're going to be pouring on. And uh, honestly, I, I'm such an eyeballer. I just eyeball it. And is, um, when I'm working working these, I, a lot of times I don't have a plan when I start. I have my idea of my colors, and then it kind of goes uh, from there. It takes on its own little direction. So um, I do want to make sure that I have enough resin, but this is great because you can always add layers to it to let it dry in between if you wanted to. Um, I try not to um, mix up too much resin because I do not want to have any leftover, although uh, a lot of times I'll take the leftovers if I do have some and pour them into a silicone mold where I'll do coasters or I have little starfish that I do or um, you could do jewelry as well with the leftover resin. So that's um, pretty good. You see how it's it's kind of leveling itself back out. And um, we're going to be adding some other colors on top of this now that we have a good base down here. All right, so now I'm putting in a little bit of the pitch black here, just kind of dropping it in. And you can see, I, I like I said, I get messy. And I got that all over that blue <laughs> painter's tape. So I'm just going to carefully wipe that up a little bit. That's to not put my arm in it and um, make a, a larger mess. And I've decided I'm just going to put a little bit of that pitch black inside the resin because those drops are pretty intense. So I'm going to mix it in with the resin this time. So we're going to get a nice, a softer black. And I'm just going to take these and just kind of mix that in. So you can use um, the colors on top of the resin and then just kind of move them along. But you can see how much thicker that paint is. It takes a little bit more work to kind of get it in there. Um, and a little goes a long way as you can tell here. So I, I probably added a little bit more than what I wanted to when I initially started but it all turned out fine. And this is uh, as always, I'm always playing no matter what I do. It seems to be um, a journey <laughs> for me. <laughs> Play. That's the key thing about all of this. You get too stressed out, just things never turn out the way you want them. So just kind of have fun with it. So I'm going to just pour in the black now that I've mixed in with the resin. And you can see the difference that you get, the, the texture difference. And I do have a full online course. It's called the Zen Disc if you want to check that out. I kind of go more into detail about how I'm mixing the resin and how I... Uh, can use all different types of uh, paints to tint your resin with. So I go a little, a little bit into a little bit more detail with that. If you want to check out that course, I'll post a link for you down below. I have a, a sale coupon link for you. So um, I have uh, some cells starting here and I used a little bit of a Resi Blast on top. And that's what you get with the Resi Blast. It will uh, actually make some uh, cell actions in your resin as well. My gosh, I almost see like this funny looking fish over here on the left hand side, a little face and the two eyeballs. <laughs> I don't know if you guys see that or not. Funny stuff happens. Um, so I'll post a link for the Resi Blast as well if you want to create some more cells on yours. And uh, now I've mixed up a little bit of uh, copper mixative. This is made by Liquitex. And um, I'm adding a little bit of copper to this. Just kind of drizzling it in. And you'll see when I heat this up again, it does, uh, does some different things as well. Because I have the Resi Blast in there. I have some pigments just dropped in there. And then we have the paints that are mixed with the resin as well. So all of those things cause the, uh, the resin to do different things. So I'm going to go ahead and... Heat that up. Grab my little torch again here. And I'm going in uh, fast paced mode here. So you can see what this does. It's not moving a whole lot yet. There we go. Now it's starting to move. If you, um, the warmer it gets, the, uh, the more that that resin will move. And if you don't want it to move, then be careful about how much you use that torch. I'm going to pick it up. I want it, I want it to move a lot. You can see how big those cells got now. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to kind of tip this and tilt it 
trying to create just a little bit more movement in here. I wanted this initially to look more like marble and I th think that looks like marble. <laughs> But I don't stop here. No, nope, I keep going because I decided I want a little bit of blue in this as well because I've got a lot of blue in my bathroom. So I'm just going to torch it here. Just um, I have a lot of air bubbles in here, so I just want to make sure I get those out before I add another layer. And you can see where that copper is really kind of mixed in there now. And it's quite pretty. You know, it's funny when you look back at these videos, you're like, oh, why didn't I stop there? That looked nice. But now I have to match the other door, so that, that'll be fun. <laughs> you get one down, and you're like, what did I do? Good thing I'm videoing it. All right, so I've got that pretty taken care of now. Most of the air bubbles are out of there, and I'm going to add another color to this. So I've decided to uh, mix in a little bit of the iridescent blue. And again, I'll put the link down there for you if you're interested in what color that I'm using. Uh, and this one is really pretty. It almost has like a little bit of silvery speckles in it. Uh, it's hard to tell from the from the video here, but it's actually, it's really, really, really pretty. So I'm going kind of going light with this. I didn't want to dump it right in there. I wanted to see how I liked it, kind of feeling it out. And um, I like the soft blue, so I'm probably going to add a little bit more to this. So now what I did just there was I spritzed it with a little bit of alcohol. And you'll see alcohol will create a little bit of cell action as well. It, it um, separates that resin out a little bit and uh, it does some fun things as well. I don't use a lot of it, but the alcohol usually will just dry right up as you, as you uh, lay it on the top of it. And you can, you can burn it off by, by torching it as well if you're a little nervous about it and you put too much on there. But as, you know, as you're working with alcohol, remember it's flammable, so be very careful when you're doing that. So I added a little bit more white. It was just a little bit too much color in there. There's a lot of black in this one and it's getting a little darker than what I wanted. So adding that white, I've got plenty of space in here because that the tray area here is about, like I said, about a quarter inch deep. So it's, um, you know, you can go all the way to the, the, the uh, edge of this if you wanted to, um, or you can, I'm gonna have to sand this one down because I don't go all the way to the top to level this off. So I found that I stopped, I liked where it was at, and I didn't need to pour any more resin. You could always put a clear coat on top as well if you wanted to level it off. But I think I'm just going to do a little light sanding and then just paint it with a regular white paint just to touch it up. So I added a little bit more of that blue to it. And I'm just going to, again, lift up my board here and just do a little bit of tilting, a little bit of movement, feeling it out, kind of playing with it here. And we'll do... Uh, Another torch session here, getting those air bubbles out. I do end up putting in a little bit of glitter, a little bit of um, was it copper, copper glitter in this as well. And I do that at the very end. Once I'm done finishing uh, up with my colors here with the resin, um, it's about, I think about 45 minutes into this now. Uh, you don't see the entire thing because I've, cut a little bit of the video out but it's about 45 minutes so it's starting to set and once it starts to set that is when I add the glitter to it and you can see it here so um, that way it stays on top and it doesn't sink down in so that's the trick to that so here's my finished piece here I hope you enjoyed it and again I'll put the links for all the products down below and this is it all finished up I've got them hanging back up and if you'd like um to leave your comments on here below. I love hearing your feedback. If there's some other things that you guys are looking to have me do for you, uh, you'd like to see a demo, please make sure that you um, comment below. And uh, if you like this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so when I post new ones, you'll be there to see it. So thanks again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So make sure you uh, tag me with KC hashtag KCFA course, or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook and post it on there. If you finished up a piece, I would love to see it. Thanks so much.